And that'll be something important to think about in your work. And thresholds and tipping points, and, and the tipping point literature is also important for understanding this disruptive change. What causes these massive changes at what point? How many households have to be involved before we actually have a change into a resilient community, right? What are those tipping points? Um, and, and you know, there is literature on tipping points that, that I think many of you are familiar with, that how you go about thinking about the tipping point problem. And, um, well, what if there is no shock? Can we still measure resilience? That'll be something you can talk about. Um, culturally meaningful measures, and we talked about this, that some, and the social capital one is probably one where we're just not being smart enough about the way we're measuring it, um, so uh, we need to look at perhaps culturally, more culturally nuanced ways to do it. Multiple level resilience measures, and we talked about, you know, the individual, and individual's important because the psychosocial measures are taken on an individual, not a household level. Okay, so we're talking about individual resilience, we're talking about household resilience, we're talking about community, community writ large, right? Um, uh, districts, districts will be important because they are units of measure, the, of observation now, of analysis, sorry, that can easily be um, extracted from many of the large survey, household survey programs are all going to district level estimates, so you, you can get some very wealthy data there at the district level, for example. Um, measuring resilience over time, we talked about the importance of qualitative measures of resilience, probably particularly for the causal pathway analysis, and that's where you can bring techniques around um, understanding the drivers in of resilience. And then uh, this definition of community, and please, it's so important now to not look at the um, sort of the old way of looking at community, which was only geography and starting to look now that that might become more and more minor, um, and that these identity uh, uh, communities and so forth may be far more important. And they're certainly important from understanding, for understanding the drivers of resilience if you look at the question of um, diaspora and so forth. And, and you know, there are steps, there are practical steps we go about doing um, resilience assessment. Establish collaborative platforms to ensure engagement of the relevant stakeholders as we go through the process, and that's meant to be RAA. At one point in time, I got punchy, and I did so. Um, to, to find um, terms, uh, concepts, uh, there was actually, this may be a version control problem, uh, specifying a research question. Um, so are you looking at estimating resilience in communities, or are you looking at causal analysis of resilience, and the approaches and techniques that you will use will be different depending upon that goal. And as we said, the causal analysis approach might, it might imply the use of, uh, uh, I'm sorry, positive deviance inquiry, um, and um, perhaps uh, more longitudinal monitoring, and also the uh, use of qualitative techniques Whereas assessment could could be, uh, you know, uh, at one point in time. So we we just find the research questions. We also uh, did, we did, we select a conceptual framework and identify the components of that framework, the units of observation, the units of analysis. And please remember those are, can be different. So we may be observing on the household level, but making inference of, at, at a larger aggregated level. And, um, and identifying the interrelated processes and structures that, that uh, in fact, um, relate to our construct of resilience and how we're studying it. So uh, the analytical questions got pushed down to the third position, should be above. Um, identify information requirements and data sources, collect and collate data, analyze and communicate findings. And it's really important to keep the communicate findings very, very central. Um, one of the things that has been a problem, and up to date it was a problem in the Haiti example, was that as we actually uh, decided to piggyback our research onto a food security survey that was being done, um, uh, the whole process got delayed. And in doing so, our findings become more, less and less relevant to decision making, okay? So we need to get with the program of thinking about academics' role as really providing good decision support as much as possible. That's how we get credibility with programming people. Okay. 
So this communicate findings is very important. It should be very well planned into your activities, the communicate findings part. 